This is a Stanley Bedrock number 608 jointer. It's, it's a huge, huge plane. And it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to a neighbor of mine, and he gave it to me, or let me borrow it, I should say, with it completely covered in rust, uh, and with the intentions of if I do move away someday to give it back to him, because it does have sentimental value to him. In the meantime, I can use it as long as I want to. So I stripped out all the rust and got it in good working order, and this thing really works really, really well. Uh, but I wanna give it back to him. The reason being is occasionally, uh, he cuts pieces for his projects that are about a sixteenth of an inch too long, and he uses a miter saw, a handheld miter saw, uh, to make all of his cuts. And anybody who works with a hand saw knows that it's, it's nearly impossible to remove about a sixteenth of an inch with a hand saw. So we get the job done on my electric saw. But I was explaining to him the other day that you know a shooting board would solve all your problems, and he didn't know what I was talking about. So I showed him mine and he was very intrigued with it. So that gave me the idea of, now that I have this in good working condition, to give it back to him with a shooting board so he could actually put this thing to use. Just for a little size comparison, this is the 608. This is the longest plane that I own, which is a number 62 low angle jack plane. This is a standard number, number four. And here is a block plane. This thing is huge. Before I make a new shooting board for the large plane, I want to show you the one that I've had in my shop for quite a while. Uh, this is set up for my number 62 low angle jack plane. Typically speaking, a low angle blade will do a better job at end grain work than a regular blade. That's not to say that you can't use a regular angled plane uh, for a shooting board. So a couple things going on here. You've got a hook down here at the bottom side to prevent this from sliding forward. It just hooks onto the side of your workbench, or in my case, I just put it in my vise. You have another uh, fence up here that is 90 degrees to the direction that the plane will be traveling up against this side of the platform. And you have two pieces of material for two different platforms, uh, one for your material and one for the plane. You need to elevate your material slightly so that it clears the the gap down here where the plane blade will not go. So if you had this plane on the same work surface, then your material would not be 100% in contact with the blade. If it's on a slightly lower surface, then you can see the entire uh, material will be contacting the blade. So this just has to be 90 degrees to this particular fence. Uh, and if it's not, then you can tune this fence with a shoulder plane and I'll show you in a little bit. Basically, if you need to remove a little bit of material on this end grain, then you can advance the material into the, the blade just slightly by hand pressure and just take shavings off. And with a sharp blade, you will be left with some nice end grain shavings and therefore reducing the length of this piece. You can use this to really dial in an exact length, an exact angle, uh, or um, or to um, cut miters. If you have like a 45 degree block that's secured to here to uh, get this at whatever angle you want, then you can do the exact same thing for angled miter cuts as well. Measurements aren't entirely critical and really you could size this to whatever size that you want. You can make small ones for using a small block plane. You don't necessarily have to have a huge plane. Uh, but for this one, it's going to have an overall footprint of 20 inches by 16 inches. Uh, and the platform that's going to sit on top, the material platform, is going to be about 20 inches by 12 inches. With both of my pieces of plywood cut, I went ahead and marked out a grid for screws to attach the top platform to the bottom platform. I'm using screws rather than glue simply because I just think it's gonna be a little bit more convenient for me right now. Either method will work just fine. The groove that I just cut right here is so that when the plane is riding on this platform, there's a groove for sawdust to go so that it does not interfere with the registration of the plane.
The material I went with for the front fence and then the rear cleat uh, is hickory, and that's because hickory is incredibly dense. It'll wear very slowly. And then also, this piece has a lot of character to it. The edge opposite of the reference face of the fence is a live edge, so that's kind of neat. And um, there's a lot of wormholes in here, so lots of character. Uh, I'm going to install the bottom cleat first. The dimensions for the bottom piece aren't really critical, so I'm just going to set this in place to what I think looks appropriate. And I'll use a square to make this perpendicular to the edge. Now before I mount the front piece, it is worth mentioning that I did make sure that this front face of the fence is nice and square. I do want to mount it with it overhanging just a little bit onto this side, that way I can trim it flush with the hand plane. But where do I want to mount it this way? It really, really doesn't matter. So I'm going to use this plane as reference. And I think right about there works because as I power through the cut, it gives me a little bit of room to, to stop the plane without it wanting to tip forward. And it also, being right there, gives me enough, plenty enough access on the front side to make a wide pass if necessary. So I think right there works. And I'll just secure the first screw first with it overhanging just a little bit to the right. Then using a square, I can move it back and forth as needed to dial it in as close as I can to square. At this point, the construction is done and we just need to tune it in. Uh, quick note, it's very beneficial to put some wax on the bottom of your plane. I just use a regular old candle, nothing fancy, and it makes this slide very easy. So this has been trimmed absolutely perfect with the plane, and now we need to make sure that this fence is indeed 90 degrees. So, with a scrap piece of wood, uh, the wider the piece of wood you have, the more uh, accurate your results will be. This is the first piece I grabbed and just make some cuts. A lot of pressure into the blade isn't really necessary. I'm just using thumb pressure and sliding it in, uh, make, maintaining the, the plane flush with the fence down here. And after a few passes you'll have enough to measure off of. And two things to measure. Number one, the bed angle here is the blade perpendicular to the bed. And in this case, it looks like it is. If you have to make any adjustments, don't worry about this being machined 90 degrees right here on your plane. Just change the angle of the blade with this lever adjustment back here. The second adjustment, or the second thing you need to check is to make sure that this angle, this fence, is indeed 90 degrees. And like I said, the wider the material, the better, your, the more accurate your results will be. But this looks like it's dead on. Let's just say that you did have to make an adjustment. So let's say that this needs to go a little bit in this direction. So you need to remove more material on this side. All you need to do is cut a taper on there. You can do it with it in place if you have a shoulder plane by making a series of short cuts, one getting longer, uh, successively getting longer as you go until eventually you make a full length shaving and then you'll have a nice taper into the piece. You can do that in place with this installed 
with a shoulder plane. If you don't have one, you can do this with a hand plane. Simply remove the screws, put it in a vise, and cut a little bit of a taper, put it back in. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. But in this case, everything looks good. And you can quickly remove about a sixteenth of an inch of material, which was the objective to begin with. And this plane is, the mass that this plane has makes this job really easy. This is a very basic design. This fence is not adjustable. So over time, the zero clearance over here is going to wear out because you inevitably accidentally tilt the plane over time and this just no longer becomes zero clearance. What that will allow is a little bit of blowout on the back side of your material as you pass the blade through the end corner of your material where there's no supporting material on the back side with the fence. So to prevent the tear out, Simply take your back corner that you initially want back there and flip it around and put it on a slight angle so you create a chamfer first. Not much is needed, just a little bit of a chamfer. Then you can roll it back into place so that the chamfer is in this top corner. And as you can see, there's a gap, you may or may not be able to see, but there's a gap into that corner compared to where it touches down here. So then you just plane away the material until the chamfer is gone. and your resulting edge should be absolutely perfectly crisp with no tear out at all. So like I said, this plane doesn't belong to me and I'm actually kind of excited to give it back to its owner even though I could borrow it for as long as I wanted to. Uh, I think this setup will really help him out and um, that's the main purpose of making one of these. Like I said, I've got a smaller one for my low angle uh, jack plane, you don't necessarily have to have a huge plane in order to take advantage of the benefits of a shooting board. Uh, you don't even necessarily have to have a number four plane. If you just have a small little block plane, uh, you can make a smaller shooting board for smaller items. And regardless of whether you are a primarily hand tool user or primarily power tool user, if you own a hand plane of any size, a shooting board can be very beneficial. As soon as you make one, you'll realize situations where uh, it can really be handy. So anyway, hopefully you found this video useful. If you want to see more videos just like it, then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Uh, check out my second channel. I post a lot of behind the scenes type stuff and it had been for a couple years over there. So there's a lot of extra stuff over there that you can go back through and check out. And if you want to see some more uh, hand tool stuff, then there's a couple of videos I'll post on the screen that I find very informative and you should definitely check those out. Thanks for watching, you guys take care and have a great day.